I think that denim, I think that jeans, I think they transcend this whole thing. We're putting on the same product they put on and their parents and grandparents and great parents put on in this product that kind of defined the birth of America. This product that was on the Patriots in the Revolutionary War up through all the world wars into Vietnam and now today. It has become a fashion statement, but what does it stand for? It stands for rugged, gritty America. That thing we're trying to bring back. When you put something on your body, you should know what it represents. And for us, what we're saying as we launch this is farmers, factory workers, craftsmen. They made this country and they also made these jeans. We have a constant. The same issue with everything. Every size is a constant. So, plan of action. Keep all original sizes and take the waste in. Well, it sounds like and me, right? that. Well, let's do it with one first. Let's yep. test that. Yep. That's it. Test it first. Don't do two things at once. So you know exactly what's changing what. Well, before we cut like a hundred thousand dollars in denim. We want to make sure that we're sure, so we're, we're triple checking due diligence so that when we go to cut the patterns, we know they're perfect. So we're making minor adjustments. You get one shot at it. You get one shot at uh, basically getting the consumer on board, the customer on board. We want it to be right the first time it goes out the door. Yeah. We've been still working on our patterns and getting them perfect in the waist. Um, we've had some issues with the waist was just a little bit too big. Um, mostly by an inch, um, taking it one size at a time and should have it straightened out by the end of this week, hopefully. Gotcha, so by lengthening it, it's just gonna make, it's it, gonna make it the same. Okay. Yeah. I'm guessing if you add a quarter of an inch to the back crack area, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. We've been given a very tight deadline, so we're cramming it all in and getting it done. You know, as fast as we can. What's that deadline? This week? This week. Launch them. Bye. So, as of right now, I'm fixing this morning the pattern for the product they're going to be making production of tomorrow. So, we need to get it finished today, cut this afternoon to be made tomorrow. Production goals are to be at what the other lines are already at. That's his goal. Unfortunately, this is a new line. They have new people learning new things. It's kind of asking too much, I guess you would say. I like to find everyone's limits. You know what I mean? And if I know if I know their breaking point, I understand the person better. I understand how far they can be pushed, so to speak. You know, I, I definitely, I never ask anybody anything that I'm not willing to do myself. So I like to find that, especially in my supervisors, without, without really letting them fail and also knowing that there's gonna be a plan B, C, and D that I have in the back of my head that we can execute should, you know, should plan. Uh, not work out. The first day of production is always the worst day. Okay. It never works out like it's supposed to. The first day, everybody's expectations are high and when you put that high of an expectation on people, it stresses them out and then their tendency to screw up. It's, that's on me 
to notice if something's not going quite right. Like I know for Jen, it wasn't going quite right. You know, and I made sure this morning I went in and I was like, hey, tell me about what's happening. Cause I, I could just feel it, I could see it. Uh, so that's on me to know how to handle those situations and make sure I'm aware. And you won't know that if you don't get your ass out of your seat and go see. Prioritize and execute. I'll be happy next week. <laughs> <laughs> Next week will run smoothly, guaranteed. The jeans for Origin is our breakout to the masses. I mean, it means everything. It means it, it's taking something that was made here for such a long time with an American supply chain, with American grown cotton, with the brass rivets and buttons, with the thread made, like everything on an American supply chain. This is how it was done, you know, 30 years ago, 50 years ago. Nobody's doing it anymore. The people who started these brands, Levi Strauss, GH Bass, all these people who started these brands, they're, these pioneers, they didn't intend for this to happen. You know, they, di they didn't predict the future and say, oh, in, in 50 years or 100 years, you know, somebody's gonna come in and they're gonna strip all the jobs away from all these people. No, I mean, they have the same vision that, that we have for Origin, same exact vision. So, you know, it's sad to see, sad for the workers to, to have to endure that. Um, but man, what a beautiful opportunity for us. <laughs> yeah. Well, Brian has not tread on the new 34s. Yeah, all right, you wanna throw those on? Yeah, I don't care. Right. Drop them. <laughs> Jen likes hanging out and watching this part. Let see that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Brian. All right, be little. All right. Be like little, be money with the space on these. All right. Oh. Pink. Space. It's like a fine wine. They only get better with time. Yeah. That's a legit fit, man. It looks like how it looks on tie. Right. Which is a little, it's kind of a, uh, a mashup between a classic and boot cut. So. Sweet. Yeah, man. Good to go. 30s, 32s, 34s, good to go. Make them. Shake and bake them. <laughs> <laughs>